<laughs> so of the shows that we watched, do any of these housewives stand out as, you know, maybe belonging on that re- Mount Rushmore? Mm. Well, you know, for probably for it's so funny because, of course, you have you have uh, the housewives in an episode that you kind of want to hate. Right. Like sort right. of like the that are kind of really stirring the shit. And then you've got the ones that maybe you feel more uh, uh, attuned to, right? So like someone that sort of goes, yeah, it feels like they maybe they have, maybe they they are a bit closer to my own moral compass. And Mm. so for both reasons, right? Because you kind of want the person who's like, who is like stirring the shit? And in the New York (laughs) in the New York uh, uh, episode that I watched, which by the way. Was that the season finale? Yeah, it was. Yeah. What an honor <laughs> to have been brought in at the end and know nothing about the season. Uh, but then, you know, of course, I've pieced it all together uh, from just watching that episode. I know what happened in the season from just that one episode. Um, it was uh, Jenna. No, no, no. Yeah, Jenna. I sort of. Okay, so oh, yeah. Jenna, I kind of felt was like in at least in this episode, I sort of felt she was maybe closer to like my own uh, moral compass take on it. Like, Oh yeah, she's being a bit nuts. You're being this way. Like she sort of felt maybe, uh, maybe just in this episode closer to like the more grounded quality. And then totally. Bryn, Bryn, whose birthday it was, who seemed to take <laughs> the entire episode, basically stirring the shit. Yeah. And then even as her birthday gift was to like, go around, let's have a little, uh, <laughs> you know, a circle where we just like throw shit at each other. That's my birthday <laughs> gift. I was like, yeah, you know, for that alone. And like her just sort of like, then saying all she wants to do is hang out with the husbands. And I think one of the other housewives was like, yeah, Bryn's birthday wish would be to just be, be beaten by a thousand dicks or some, something <laughs> like this. I was like, yeah, that's, that's kind of that, that's verges on, on uh, maybe belonging up on the Rushmore uh, yeah. uh, mantle. And then also I think it was Cy who was also, it seemed like Cy was maybe, she seemed to have like the shortest fuse and ready to kind of explode at any moment. Like, you know, and I would say like, cause her and Jessel were kind of having a bit, bit of a back and forth, but Jessel sort of still maintained this thing of like, I don't shout, don't yeah. shout now. And whereas Cy just sort of felt like, you know, she does not hold back. And then I even think at some point in the episode, she was like saying, uh, you know, you're both my friends. So I'm just gonna like, she said something out of both sides of her mouth. <laughs> but like, I fucking hate you and you're stupid as shit. And you're both my friends. So I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. A nice friendship. <laughs> yeah. This is a very strong cast and it's actually surprising if you watch this and you don't have the context, they are all newcomers. Cause this was a hard reboot this season. So wow. none of the old cast from last season was returning and this is a, a fresh start and a lot of them are very like savvy housewives like the type of perform- mm. performance that you would expect to get from like a, a second or third season out of out of a housewife we got yeah. this season from them so you um, know with it and maybe there's something about new york too because i think about you know uh, the early days of of the housewives franchise the new york housewives franchise they that there is just something about New Yorkers maybe in general, not to sort of like paint everyone with the same brush, but there is something about sort of, whether you'd call it wearing your heart on your sleeve or not afraid of just kind of like cutting through the shit and and uh, giving your earnest take on something. Maybe that's a bit of a stereotypical n- sort of New York attitude, but they all kind of have that savvy, uh, there's a ha- almost a harder edge. And maybe it's like, you know, living in the Big Apple or whatever it is, but it's like they all kind of have that articulate sort of savvy edge about them that is mm, a bit more in your face, I think, than in a lot of other Housewives franchise. So maybe even just sort of that general energy, even though they haven't been in, uh, you know, this is their first season together. It's just sort of generally having that energy as a person. You're just kind of like, I'm from New York and I just let it all hang out. And there it is. This is how it is. This is my take. Yeah. Yeah, It's one of the things that we've discussed on previous episodes of our podcast, just how like the actual like physical space of being in New York and Mm. like the need to, um, because it's so dense, carve out your own space, how that impacts kind of this, um, this persona that you gain when you become a New Yorker and how that impacts the, the chemistry on this cast. Yes, yeah, Cy in particular, I feel, really embodies that stereotypical idea of a yes. New Yorker where the idea that like uh, being as loud and direct and in your face as possible just means that you're being honest. And that's like the most like 
prize quality. Everybody's just expected yes. to like just shout how you feel in each other's faces without a hesitation. Little, <laughs> a little Bethany Frankel in there. If there you, you will. go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Yeah. Yeah, she she does kind of remind me somewhere, you know, somewhere across between Bethany Frankel and then like uh, like I was saying, um, oh, her name's gone from my mind for a second, but it's because she does sort of have that that sort of quintessential New York quality to her, you know, in your face. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, since we're talking about New York, uh, how about let's oh, talk about your gosh. highlights for this episode? Uh, oh, for the what New York episode, to you? yeah. Oh my God. Okay, first of all, I love Dante Bryn Psychic. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very it was just a very short lived moment, but I was kind of like, is there an easier job than being like, uh, like, you know, a, a psychic to one of the housewives? Because I think his his only, his only his only reading as he was flipping over cards was like, you may be caught in the middle between two people that hate each other. <laughs> and I, I, I'm kind of like, uh, yeah, okay, where? Wow, where did you get that uh, wisdom from? From deep in those cards that you were able to pluck that from. Uh, so he was kind of shortly lived, but I was just sort of, I, I imaginatively went down the road of like, yeah, what are the things would he sort of say? Yes, you know, you you may be at a party where you don't feel welcome. <laughs> you, you know, like <laughs> when Brid goes to the washroom, he just calls over the production assistant and is like, "Can I just see your notes for this episode?" Okay, I got yeah. it. Thanks. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Why am I seeing bumper cars on ice? Um... <laughs> Sometime so... Monday, starting at eight a.m. <laughs> uh, uh, so it was a very short-lived moment, but I was kind of like, yeah. Yeah, I kind of love him, and I just love the idea of like uh, somebody like him. Obviously, Bren's birthday party was like you know everything was driving towards that, and I love that she created a safe space for herself, but then ultimately put together a circle to just shit on each other. Yeah, which was you know <laughs> that was like that was definitely definitely a highlight. I also kind of love that Bryn earlier on in the episode after the bumper cars, I just threw out like every day this year I'm going to have my tits out. That's yeah. my goal. <laughs> <laughs> and i was kind of like okay that's that's uh okay reach for the star reach for the stars that's my that's my goal for this year this is my new year's resolution tits out more yeah. um and oh and then my other favorite moment again this is around Bryn. And i don't i don't know why but Bryn, when uh the birthday candles were going and then the balloons came down and started to blow <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when the balloons started to yes, explode yeah, and then yeah. she had this look of terror like she was in the Hindenburg yeah. and then she was like, oh my God, my organic biology chemistry <laughs> yeah. degree. We need to be careful. Helium. And it's like, no, it's not helium. Helium doesn't do anything. It, it, it can't catch on fire. It's hydrogen. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, that, <laughs> that, that uh, deep moment of terror on her face. I was like for a second going, fuck, does helium? I was like, I don't think so. That's hydrogen, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I, it reminded me of that scene in like, um, uh, what was it? Uh, um, Will Ferrell and the the model, the, the uh, Zoolander, right? You know, when they're like having their uh, fight with gasoline oh, uh, yeah, at the right. gas station, right? Just sort of like having fun. And it's just like, I could sort of see that, you know, spiraling out of like, oh my God, we're all going to explode. Let's keep on popping the balloons. So that would be a season finale. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it goes exactly. Up in <laughs> and I will say one thing that did stand out a little bit because this is the season finale. I sort of thought... I don't know. I mean, it was like yeah, there was some definitely some, you know, a little bit of infighting going on in the in the party. But I sort of thought I was almost waiting for like the big, crazy blowout moment. And it didn't quite really yeah, get it there. Fizzled, eh? You know, kind of did. And I was like, they were kind of like building this little house of cards. And I thought, OK, this is ready to go off. But in it, you know, they sort of had some disagreements. But at the end of the at the end at of the, the day, end of it, it was all... just helium in the balloon. It was just yeah. helium. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody truly exploded. So. Yeah, th yeah, it's 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 too bad. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that as well, and I feel like maybe that this is one way where the uh, the the noobishness of these housewives mm -hmm. is kind of like showing itself because right. we have seen like really strong seasons from very experienced housewives where it all kind of comes together and we've referred to it as like the Kaiser Soze moment where you see who's like pulling the strings and yeah. what was a lie and what yes. wasn't. Um, yes. And yeah, we didn't really get that. It just kind of happened and things were left a little unresolved. So I think and that it, that... Uh, yeah, like I, I agree. And, I, and also kind of like the some of the allegations i mean 
excuse me, some of the some of the reason why some of the you know uh, different housewives are kind of uh, at odds with one another. It, it sort of felt like the stakes weren't massive somehow. I, I I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly why. I mean, I know that one of the big things was, you know, that the one housewife was upset that the other uh, was kind of like calling her husband out for just saying that he basically she basically just lets me be me and. <sighs> And then the other thing about, you know, oh, I didn't want anyone to reveal that my boy, I have a boyfriend. And then, and then like the further big one was like, and that he's in Connecticut. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it was, was kind of like, you know, they kind of clung on to that. Like it's one thing that he, that she has the boyfriend that she didn't want revealed, but then that they found out he's in Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it's also, it's kind of like, yeah, but you're on the fucking show and you're, Afraid that you're you're trying to keep this relationship secret. Yeah, you know what I this mean. This guy's so couple... for sure married, right? Oh like, my god! Gosh. I mean, definitely, he's got to be right. It's, it's like, but it's it's kind of like, um, it sort of felt like some of those stakes didn't feel quite as high as maybe you might expect to be driving towards to the end of a season. Yeah, mm. this is one of the things where I feel like Uba was just about to get like a touchdown. She was able to like get a almost to the line where she mm-hmm. was getting through the season without having this revealed. Mm. And she just like fumbled it right at the the, the one yard yeah. line. Yes. And even like if she wanted to play into like the dramatic, like, so she then kind of storms off at the end of the party, but at the same time, then they're all out on the sidewalk and just going, it's okay. We're fine. <laughs> like you remember she was, she was like talking to, she, who, who was it that she was talking to? Uh, it was, Sai, Uban Sai? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was like sign. She was like basically on the sidewalk afterwards, kind of going like, I kind of forgive you, but that wasn't really nice. Like it, it was, it was some, it was some, you know, it was like, that could have been the big moment of like, I'll never see you again. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Then, yeah. then, you know, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, first of all, I'm so sorry. And Uba's like, I'm taking a call right now. It's cool. We're cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, ta- I'm talking to this guy in Connecticut to let yeah. him know that, you know, they just know generally the state that he might be in. So that's all. <laughs> One thing that I really liked about this episode was the fact that we got like a little bit of the meta exposed of the housewife game. That's something that I'm always looking for. And uh, the fact that like the camera was was a character in this episode where Mm. it was like, oh, yeah, you said that in front of the camera. It's important that like Mm -hmm. what was said in front of the camera versus, you know, just plain talking behind the back. Um, yeah. I really like seeing that part of the game exposed because that kind of calls back to what we saw in Salt Lake City, not this past episode, but the episode prior where Whitney was really working hard to draw some information out in front of the camera from from Monica in order to like set the the wheels in motion. So seeing that they are aware of that really gives me a lot of hope for next season in terms of how they build upon this and you know play the game with a, a little bit more uh, experience. Mm -hmm. And I, I, uh, I also was trying to, uh, get a sense of like, who, who is, who is sort of the most senior of these housewives in New York? Like, is it, is it Jenna is, is like, she, everyone comes over to her apartment and they're doing a shoot. And then uh, like, she, is she sort of like the central socialite in the New York scene for this group? Or is it, is it, um, Jessel? And her husband, like, you know what I mean? Like you you sort of in, in the old days, New York countess was kind of like, like she may have been sort of the queen bee because maybe she had like the bigger house out in, uh, you know, out in long Island or whatever it was. But um, I was trying to get a sense of like, what is the sort of full hierarchy? Like why, why was, why was Jessel over at her place to do the photo shoot? Or like, is she, do you know what I mean? Like, and, yeah. and she was also talking about when she's in the closet with her son picking yeah. out outfits. <laughs> oh my God, with her 15 year old son is like, he has like, you know, all these fashion points on. It's like, well, no, that has, that outfit has like holes in it or, or it's, what do you say? It's like mesh almost, but the mask is solid. So that just won't work. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this is like such a deep intellectual dive on how fashion works. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> um, but well, she uh, was she was famous before Real Housewives of New York, so yeah, she would definitely yeah. be like the the top of the pecking order because she was at like mm-hmm. a Met Ball and stuff. Is she a photographer? Uh, she thing, was like the fashion, the main designer. yeah the main person at J Crew. Like she was the, oh shit. the head of the brand. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and she she's is she does she she doesn't have a partner in this, does she? Like she doesn't in 
Is she no. Love? So yeah. she was dating someone and we never got to meet her. And then she alluded to the fact that her partner or she had, was dating like someone new. Okay. I don't know if that was the girl that she brought to the party or not. But uh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, I wrote that down. I think it hold on. I, I wrote down her name because I was like, oh, hold on. Where is it here? Is this? It's not Sarah, is it? Hold on. I wrote down the name of like the girl that she brought. Uh, but whoever, where, where does it say? I don't know. Oh, it's, no, I don't know. But the reason is because the the partner that she brought to the event kind of like had a doily for a mask, but yeah. no <laughs> eye holes. <laughs> like like it, like there was no real eye holes. It, it could have. It literally could have just been like a doily <laughs> that was kind of you know that was like it's all basically eye holes, so it doesn't yeah. matter. But <laughs> and the other thing that I love too is that the mask stayed on for all of about seven seconds. You've got to yeah. wear it in the door, but then I would I really do want my face seen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I enjoyed the uh, the McDonald's like hamburger comparison. Oh my god, I thought that was really good. Looked like a t- uh, she looked like teenage min- uh, teenage ninja yeah. mutant, like just that sort of like <laughs> skull cap strip of all of the sort of sexy masks that someone might choose. <laughs> it yeah. just looked like the strangest skull cap duck bill. Yeah, Zorro. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh my god, partial helmet was uh, very strange. <laughs> <laughs> uh dylan how about you what were your highlights from this episode uh seriously considering getting a tattoo that reads if you mention connecticut i'm going to circumcise you because that's <laughs> one, of, one of my favorite lines from the show and uba comes through again with another all-timer next season tagline maybe <laughs> Ooh. Uh, um, I kind of agree that uh, with your assessment that it felt like the drama was kind of building, but didn't really blow up. And I feel like that kind of um, applies to the whole season in a lot of ways. Like, I do think it is a good cast. Like you said, Craig, we've got we've met some interesting characters. Uh, I have been a little disappointed that I feel like there hasn't been like real fundamental disagreements that like have teeth and like that are really like rooted in their uh, their personalities mm-hmm. and the differences between them. It's more just like they occasionally get annoyed at each other and then apologize. That might take some more time to build since this cast is still new. Uh, but Yeah, um, I wonder, I, I'm curious what you think, if this has anything to do with that power dynamic because Jenna is like, has so much more of a platform than the rest mm-hmm. of this cast. Everyone is on even, like on an even playing field, which is what we, we normally see in a housewife season, except for one person. And right. they're all trying to like climb and find their own platform here. I wonder if that plays into it at all. Yeah. Some of them might be thinking like long term, like trying to find their footing to like where they're going to settle in the hierarchy going into next season or so that where their starting position is going to be. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Still, uh, it was a pretty good episode. I did. I definitely like Sai just like cranking it up and just like bringing the shouting because if she's not going to do it, nobody else is. And, uh, <laughs> and she's more than happy to fill that role. Um, oh, my God. Well, and, you know, it was so funny too. Uh, Bryn, uh, her, like her sort of pushing. Is it uh, Jessel? Like pushing her to be like. You need yeah. to shout. <laughs> you need to. <laughs> right. You need to, uh, like, you know what I mean? To, like, st- to to be with these bitches, you need to shout in their face. Like, yeah. she was really yeah. trying to, like, it was not okay for her to just be like, you know, you can have disagreement, but you need to, you need to be, like, really raise your volume. You, right, it's not yeah. okay to be quiet and have a disagreement. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I do think like the substance of what Sai was getting angry at Jessel for was kind of hard to to grasp. You know, she's like, "You lie about everything." Yeah, when you mentioned your husband's plane ticket and implied it had a fixed date when the date wasn't technically fixed, like, wait, what? Are, what are we angry about here? Like, I what? couldn't <laughs> figure out what what was supposed to be arranged. Like, because I, I, I know they sort of like did a flashback to another moment where it was like she arranged for something. And it, she did that because her husband was supposed to be flying away. Is that the deal? Yeah. The, the Pavitt's trip to Vietnam, which he's been talking yes. about for a while, was kind of sketchy. And, and just in the sense that people couldn't really figure out why he was going to Vietnam. Okay. Uh, so it was a little more juicy when they seemed to be implying that he was doing like sex tourism. Right. And they seemed to have kind of backed up, backed off from that. And so yeah. I was just using this as like an example of Jessel being dishonest. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't have the ticket book but he sort of had the date but it wasn't firm yeah. <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> sounds like everyone's travel plans yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Pavit did have another really bad episode, though. Speaking of Pavit, oh yeah, sketchy. like when like when Jessel says like, "Oh, d- does my voice sound sexy?" Like, how hard oh is it God. to just say yes? Like, <laughs> you, just can't, you just can't do those little things. He's like, um, um, "No, <laughs> like, come on, Pavit." These, these are like absolute like slab dunks. Like, just <laughs> just say yes, oh, <laughs> Christ. <my God. laughs> her, her coming in that room too, just saying like. I leave the house for a minute and look at what's happened. And there's like the most neatly organized ball pit with no <laughs> child. I'm like, holy shit. This looks, this does still look out of like, you know, some kind of uh, uh, house, uh, house magazine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was like, this is, this is the shit show at your home. Uh, okay. <laughs> Maybe that was in reaction to the no child. Yeah. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> I leave for a couple of minutes and now we don't know where any of them are. And you're playing in a ball pit. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Did you have any other highlights from New York? Um, th- th- well, I I will say that they finally have like a charcuterie platter that looks good, which has kind of been a running theme for me. Uh, like, oh yeah, just that <laughs> we keep seeing terrible looking charcuterie platters in the show. And this this one we had one that actually looked good. So and uh, Be- and um, done. yeah, and and Cy will not shut up about uh, the cheese reference, which is whatever. No. Fine, uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Oh, you know what? A tiny bit of a prop to Aaron uh, for doing like the parrot costume. That's yeah. as close as Aaron's ever been to being funny. She's yeah. <laughs> she's still a few time zones away, but she's it's it's the closest she's been. <laughs> that killed with everyone though. Like oh, everyone absolutely. had that like just loved down. it. Yeah. yeah, it was like it was like such a big uh, such a big thing you could tell too because like even it was one of those rare times where. You could also even see like producers in the background and a, a hall. Remember when she was she was sort of getting set up for this whatever was about to happen. Yeah, and you almost never see that. Like in yeah. those in the in in those shows, they never really show any of the sort of behind the actual camera, like what is happening. But that was one moment because you knew like shit, we got to get it. She's about to do this thing, and it doesn't matter who you can see. It doesn't. There's headsets <laughs> yeah. on. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like you knew that it was like some big shit was going to happen. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, a little. Oh no, go ahead. That. A little prop there for that. No, that's it. That's it. It's just. Yeah, I think we we covered most of what I wanted to talk about for New York. I do think it was a a better episode for David size partner. I have been very reluctant to you know give him points, but I thought he did a good job, kind of like addressing why Uba might be upset with him, and uh, also when Jessel came over and talked to him, uh, smoothing things over a little bit. So um, he's growing on me a little bit. Oh, and he also had a talk with Jenna, I think, where he called her like a superhero. So I thought this was like a good showing. It actually seemed authentic this time. Um, yeah, I actually thought he didn't come off great in his talk with Jenna because I feel like Jenna was trying to explain like why she she sometimes doesn't feel confident and stuff, and he and he was kind of almost talking over her like, oh, yeah, you're a superhero, you're the best, you've you've you know done a bunch of shit, like just like it seemed very like one dimensional, like no, 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 you're like yeah, everything's good, you you know, you, I, positivity, 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 and uh, and Jenna, she even says at one moment like I have a perspective on this, and then in the confessional she has some good wisdom where she's like, you know, for me being open is a question of having uh, a safe landing pad, you know, like she, yeah. she provides actual like uh context and, and is actually like thinking about these things where uh, I, I felt like uh, uh, David, both with her and with Uba was just trying to be like, Oh no, I just think you guys are amazing. End of story. <laughs> you know, nothing else <laughs> has to be discussed here. <laughs> just I positivity. will say, like, I will say as an outsider, I was somewhat surprised that he was size partner. Be- and I think maybe for a couple of the reasons, Craig, that you were saying, which is that he did come across in this episode, uh, you know, at times as being a bit more like taking some responsibility for what was said and trying to make amends and and uh, you know in <clears throat> for whatever reason in my mind i was like uh this does not this seems to be the antithesis of sai right who would yeah. not, <laughs> you know right. what i mean <laughs> uh, so i'm not exactly sure what i was imagining but in those in a couple of those moments he seemed to kind of have like a somewhat centered take on things and it seems like i i wondered how those two kind of how what their dynamic is because i would say she might be one of the furthest 
people from caring about having a centered take on something. She's just like, I'll, wherever, whatever emotion takes me, I'm fine with just simply going there. I don't really care what happens. That's just how it is, you know? And, and whereas it seemed like he's sort of in a couple of those moments being a bit reflect, like reflecting a little bit and trying to take responsibility, make amends yeah. uh, for things that he sort of, sort of felt, um, you know, was taken the wrong way. And it's so weird. Like in that moment, I got to say, like, I, as I heard it when they were showing a flashback to that moment, at least how it seemed in the editing of it, it seemed like he was simply saying, I can't believe you wouldn't have a partner because you have all these amazing qualities. And mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It didn't strike me at that moment as being this thing about saying like, you need to have a man or a partner in your life. I was just thinking more like, Oh, it just seemed like uh, he, him questioning, you have so much going for you. I'm surprised that there isn't an, a relationship in, in, uh, as for you right now as well, because, you know, there's many qualities about you that are really would draw somebody in to want to, you know, share their time with. So I, I, I don't know, for whatever mm -hmm. reason, it didn't strike me that way, but it clearly did strike her that way because she kind of heard him out and was also like, thank you for apologizing. And yeah, that's not really what you would say. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that like, it was a like a good apology in that he, um, you know, he didn't try to over explain, you know, what he was, uh, what he was intending. He was just like, oh, this like offended you. I understand. Yeah. Like, and I was wrong here. And yeah, just overall, I felt like he came across like fairly measured, which I guess is what I would expect from someone who is married to someone with a temperament like Cy, right, right. having the need to like <laughs> constantly be like negotiating uh, and like, taking a cautious uh, approach. Yes, let me try to diffuse the situation yeah. uh, by being by stepping forward and saying I. I I'm sorry for my part in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would probably be the first person to offer that before she would. <laughs> uh, any last thoughts on New York from either of you guys? Well, I'm, because because it was the season finale, and I, I, you know, I was very interested in your both of your takes on sort of the final thought or two that were up on the screen, you know, with each character, because it was so out of context for me that I has half of it. I couldn't really, I didn't know exactly <laughs> what they were referencing. Cause it was clearly like things along the, along the uh, season that had happened that they were referencing, like, you know, so-and-so will be traveling and no, it won't be economy. And, you know, you're sort of like, Oh, oh that yeah. must've been somebody, there was an issue. Right. So, uh, but so I was just kind of curious uh, from your perspectives, from f following it along, following along all season, if it left your appetite for, you know, what will happen next season, or did everybody get their just desserts, or di or or was there sort of uh, did that button up an interesting arc season long? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think that there was anything that um was really tied up it felt like a lot of kind of insidey jokes almost it was just mm -hmm. references to the to the past season which you know it was it was fine i um if it, i wasn't left like wanting more from this right. episode i wasn't like looking really for much to get tied up it felt like a little bit of a um condensed season like it or an abbreviated season actually like i felt like there could be maybe more episodes that um, just, you know, kind of got cut off. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, uh, I wasn't really left wanting much more and I don't really have much of an opinion either way on how they kind of did their like ending slides. 